In this video, we're going to see what happens when we mix an alkene with sulfuric acid and water. So let's go over the mechanism for this reaction. So we can rewrite sulfuric acid H2SO4 like this, HOSO3H. In the first step, the alkene is going to behave as a nucleophile. It's going to abstract a proton. And that proton will go on the primary carbon that was double bonded. This is to produce a more stable tertiary carbocation intermediate. And then in the next step, water is going to combine with the carbocation intermediate, giving us this intermediate, an oxonium species. And then in another step, another water molecule or I guess you could use HSO4 minus 2, but we're going to use water. Another water molecule is going to act as a weak base and remove a proton from uh, this intermediate. So the end result for this reaction is that we get an alcohol. But in this example, we're going to get a tertiary alcohol. So that's the product of an alkene with water and sulfuric acid. This is the acid catalyzed hydration of alkenes, and it produces alcohols. Now let's try some other problems. So let's say we have 3-methyl, 1-butene, and we're going to react it with the same reagents, sulfuric acid and water. If you want to try this problem, feel free to pause the video and work on it. So the first step is going to be the same. The alkene is going to abstract a proton. It's going to react with the acid. And just like before, the proton will go on a primary carbon to give us a more stable secondary carbocation intermediate. Now, what's different about this reaction than the other one is that the carbocation is next to a tertiary carbon. And so a hydride shift will occur. The driving force for this hydride shift is carbocation stability. Due to the hydride shift, we're going to go from a secondary carbocation to a tertiary carbocation. So here is where the new hydrogen is located. When the hydrogen moves, it leaves behind a plus charge. And so now that we have a more stable carbocation intermediate, what's going to happen next is that water is going to behave as a nucleophile, combining itself with the carbocation center. And we're going to get this intermediate which we've seen before. And then in the next step, we're going to use another water molecule to remove a proton. And so the end result for this reaction, just like the other one, is that we get a tertiary alcohol. Now let's move on to our next example. So in this example, we're going to have 3,3-dimethyl, 2-butene, and we're going to react it with sulfuric acid, but we're going to change the reaction a bit. So this time, it's going to be sulfuric acid in methanol as opposed to water. So what type of product do you think we're going to get in this reaction? The mechanism is very similar to the previous one with some slight differences. So if you want to pause the video and try this problem, feel free to do that now. So the first step is the same, protonation of the alkene. The alkene behave as a nucleophile, and hydrogen is going to behave as the electrophile. So initially, we're going to get a secondary carbocation. Now notice that this secondary carbocation is not adjacent to a tertiary carbon, but rather a quaternary carbon. Because it's next to a quaternary carbon, we can't have a hydride shift. So instead, what we're going to get is what is known as a methyl shift. A methyl group is going to migrate to the secondary carbon. And so the entire hydrocarbon structure is going to change. So now that the methyl group has moved towards the right, the plus charge is going to move towards the left to the carbon where the methyl group came from. And so now at this point, Methanol is going to behave like water. It's going to act as a nucleophile 
combining with the carbocation. By the way, the driving force for the methyl shift is increased carbocation stability. Here we had a secondary carbon, I mean secondary carbocation, but now we have a tertiary carbocation. So that's why these rearrangements occur. It's because a molecule or an ion will try to find the most stable conformation. And so it will rearrange to do that. And this happens automatically. So now once methanol adds to the nucleophile, we're going to get an intermediate that looks like this. Anytime oxygen has three bonds, it's going to have a plus charge. Now, in the next step, we're going to use another methanol molecule to deprotonate this intermediate. And so the final product of this reaction is that we get an ether. An ether is basically an organic compound where an oxygen is sandwiched between two carbons. And you can see that here. This oxygen is between the CH3 carbon and this uh, tertiary carbon. So make sure you understand the difference here. When you react an alkene with sulfuric acid and water, you're going to get an alcohol. But if you use sulfuric acid and an alcohol, you're going to get an ether. Now let's consider one more example. Now this example is going to be a challenge problem. So I highly recommend that you pause the video and work on it. So we're going to use sulfuric acid, just like before, but we're going to go back to H2O. Go ahead and pause the video and work on that example problem. So the first step is the same, protonation of the alkene. The hydrogen is going to go on a primary carbon, and initially we are going to get a secondary carbocation. Now what do you think is going to happen here? There's a lot of things that could happen. Note that the secondary carbocation is next to a tertiary carbon. And so we can get a hydride shift. If that happens, we'll get a tertiary carbocation, which is more stable than a secondary carbocation. But something else can happen in addition to a hydride shift, and that is a ring expansion. If you see a five carbon ring and a carbocation adjacent or outside of that five carbon ring, a ring expansion can occur, and that's an extra driving force for rearrangement. And so if you can get both a hydride shift and ring expansion, chances are it's going to happen. So first, let's uh, number the carbon atoms. We're going to call this carbon one, two, three, four five and six. So the bond between carbons two and six, that's going to break. Now keep in mind, there are two electrons in that bond. So when that bond breaks, those electrons will be used to connect carbons one and six. And so we're going to go from a five carbon ring to a six carbon ring. Now six carbon rings are more stable than five carbon rings because six carbon rings don't have the ring strain that four carbon and five carbon rings have. And so that leads to a structure that's more stable. And that's why ring expansions occur. Now let's go ahead and mark the numbers down in this new ring. So we're going to say this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. So note that we have a methyl group on carbon six. And we still have another methyl group on carbon one. The question is, where is the plus charge now? So a bond was broken between carbons two and six. However, a bond was formed between carbons one and six. So two lost a bond, but didn't get anything back. So carbon two is where the plus charge is located. So right now we have a secondary carbocation next to a tertiary carbon, which means a hydride shift will occur. So in this mechanism, we had both a ring expansion and a hydride shift. 
as opposed to just a single hydride shift. So now we're going to get a six carbon ring with a tertiary carbocation intermediate. So now the plus charge is here and the hydrogen has moved to this location, but we don't need to show the hydrogen. At this point, water is going to combine with the carbocation intermediate. It can attack from the front or it can attack from the back, which means we're going to get a mixture of stereoisomers. But we'll write that at the end. So right now we have this intermediate. And then in the final step, we're going to deprotonate this species. And so the end result is that we're going to get a tertiary alcohol on a six carbon ring. Now we do have a chiral center. And so we're going to get stereoisomers. We'll get both the R and the S isomer in this example. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know what happens when you mix an alkene with water and sulfuric acid. That is, you get an alcohol. And if you react an alkene with methanol or an alcohol and sulfuric acid, you're going to get an ether.